Welcome to Food Stories. The show that gives you the story behind some of the world's most popular and beloved food. We'll also serve you with simple recipes, fun facts, and tips in cooking and preparing these food favorites. So what are you waiting for? Let's delve deeper as we tickle your brains and taste buds. This is Food Stories. Sashimi. The sashimi is a Japanese delicacy that consists of fresh raw seafood sliced into very thin pieces. It is usually served in fancy plating arrangements with garnishing and is eaten with soy sauce and wasabi. Sashimi is usually eaten as an appetizer or as the first course of a meal, although sashimi can also be eaten as a meal in itself, when consumed along with rice and a bowl of miso soup. The word sashimi comes from a combination of the words sashi and mi. Sashi means pierced while mi means body. The word dates back to the Japanese Murumachi period during the 1300s. Sashimi is usually served as the first course during most Japanese formal dining or fine dining events. Japanese sashimi chefs recommend eating the sashimi first so as to not to affect the taste palate before other stronger flavored foods from succeeding meal courses affect it. Often, sashimi will be served with soy sauce, some wasabi, and fresh grated ginger. Here's a simple sashimi recipe that you can try at home. You will need 500 grams or a pound of fresh sashimi grade tuna, two avocados flesh cut into thick slices, two tablespoons extra virgin olive oil, one tablespoon lime juice, plus extra lime to serve. Four spring onions, finely sliced on the diagonal. One half cup or 125 ml light soy sauce. And one half teaspoon wasabi. You will also need a properly sharpened knife for cutting. Start by cutting the fish very thinly about half a centimeter or about 0.19 inch strips. Remember to be extra careful when using a sharp knife. Arrange the pieces on a plate, then proceed to cut the avocado. Make thinly sliced avocado strips for garnishing the tuna. Next, combine the olive oil and the lime juice for dressing. When serving, arrange the avocado and tuna on a plate. Drizzle the plate with the olive oil dressing and garnish with spring onions, then serve it with the soy sauce and wasabi. Tip! When buying fish, make sure to ask for the sashimi-grade cuts to be sure that the fish you are buying is fresh and clean. Also, ask your butcher or store if they can prepare the fish pre-cut for you. Sauerkraut The sauerkraut is a dish that is made from finely chopped cabbage which was brined and fermented by lactic acid bacteria. This gives the sauerkraut its definitive sour flavor and a long shelf life. The word sauerkraut literally translates to the German terms for sour cabbage. The sauerkraut's origins can be traced to the development of the brining and pickling method in ancient Roman times where foods were preserved by fermentation via brining and pickling. According to some accounts, it was Genghis Khan who introduced this food preservation method to Eastern Europe, where eventually the sauerkraut would be invented. Sauerkraut's tradition is deeply rooted in Eastern European and early Germanic people's cuisine, where it gained popularity because it was easy to transport and had good shelf life. 
making it ideal for travel and as a food source during winter time. Check out this easy sauerkraut recipe that you can try at home. You will need one large green cabbage, three tablespoons non-iodized salt, salt brine. To make brine, follow the ratio one teaspoon non-iodized salt dissolved per one cup of water. You will also need a clean resealable jar. Start by rinsing your cabbage thoroughly and remove the thick outer layers of the cabbage. Once that's done, take your knife and quarter the cabbage. Then, proceed to chop the cabbage into very fine strips. Place the chopped cabbage in a clean bowl and add in the salt. Vigorously massage in the salt with the cabbage and press out additional liquids from the cabbage. Pack the cabbage tightly in the jar, then let it stand for two hours. Then, pack the cabbage again tightly, making sure that there are no air gaps in between. Fully submerge the cabbage in brine and wipe off the excess liquids, then seal. Place in a dark and dry place. Check the sauerkraut every few days to make sure it's clean and free of molds. Let the cabbage ferment for 2-3 to three weeks before consuming. Fun Fact Despite being associated with Eastern European cuisine, did you know that sauerkraut is also a popular condiment and side dish in the USA? In fact, as much as 387 million pounds of sauerkraut are consumed in the U.S. yearly. Ketchup The ketchup is a popular table sauce or condiment. It is traditionally made of different ingredients and spices which include sugar, vinegar, mushroom, pickled fish, oysters, and mussels. Today, the word ketchup is synonymous with tomato ketchup, a sweet and tangy sauce that is primarily tomato-based. It is also considered as one of the most popular condiments around the world. The word ketchup actually comes from the Chinese term ketya, which was originally a type of pickled fish sauce. Eventually, this sauce made its way to Malaysia, where it came to be known as ketchup, and in Indonesia, where it's known as ketjap. In the 17th century, English sailors who traveled to China were the first to bring the ketchup back to the West. The word ketchup was first mentioned in print in 1690. The early type of ketchup was less thick and had more in common with soy sauce, oyster sauce, and Worcestershire sauce. It wasn't in the late 1700s when tomato became a base ingredient in making ketchup. The Heinz Company began selling tomato ketchup in 1876. They would go on to be one of the most popular ketchup company around the world. By the dawn of the 19th century, tomato ketchup became the norm in ketchup production. Eventually, tomato ketchup simply became known to be synonymous with the term ketchup. Did you know that you can make ketchup at home? You will need 4 tomatoes 2 tablespoons apple cider vinegar 2 tablespoons sugar 3 fourth teaspoons salt 1 clove garlic 1 medium onion 2 thirds cup water You will also need a hand mixer or a blender and a mortar and pestle First, take your tomatoes and slice them into small chunks Next, take your garlic and use a mortar and pestle to pound the garlic into fine, almost paste-like consistency. Next, take the onions and chop them very finely. Combine all the ingredients and place them in a bowl or blender. Use the food processor to pulse the ingredients until you have a nice, even consistency. Pulse the ingredients as necessary until you achieve the desired consistency. Use the ketchup fresh or place in a jar and store it in the fridge. Fun fact! How do you spell ketchup? K-E-T-C-H-U-P or is it C-A-T-S-U-P? 
Actually, both terms are English variations of the Chinese term ketsia and are correct. Kimchi Kimchi is a traditional Korean side dish that is made of fermented vegetables and a host of different seasonings. The type of kimchi is usually based on the main fermented ingredient that is used. The most common ingredients used in making kimchi include brine, scallions, spices, ginger, radish, shrimp sauce, and fish sauce. Before modern times, early kimchi used to be made with just cabbage and beef stock. During harvest seasons, kimchi was made in small batches but come winter, more kimchi was produced and stored to prepare for the lesser food supply available in the climate. The characteristic red color of the kimchi we know today didn't come until the 18th century. The red chili used for this color was not available locally in Korea and had been imported from Japan when the Europeans first traded the red chili in the East. The kimchi spread out to other neighboring Asian countries like Japan through trade as well as with Western countries. Check out this simple recipe. You will need one medium cabbage, one fourth cup sea salt, one tablespoon grated garlic, one teaspoon grated ginger, one teaspoon sugar, five tablespoons Korean red pepper flakes, one small radish sliced into strips, Four scallions chopped. Start by slicing the cabbage into small crosswise strips. Place the strips in a bowl and proceed to massage it with salt. You should feel the cabbage getting softer. Add in water and use a heavy spoon or utensil to keep the cabbage submerged for one to two hours. When done, rinse the cabbage, then drain. Squeeze out any remaining water, then combine the cabbage with the seasoning ingredients. Massage the ingredients thoroughly, then pack it tightly in a jar. Squeeze out the remaining brine from the mix and let it submerge the ingredients, leaving a 1-inch gap up top. Seal the jar and let the ingredients ferment around 1 to 5 days. Periodically check the kimchi for taste and flavor. And when it's done, serve it as a side dish or keep it in the fridge to store. Fun fact! Kimchi is considered as the national dish of Korea and is pretty much a staple of Korean culture. When taking photographs instead of saying cheese, most Koreans would pose and say kimchi to smile for pictures. Mustard The mustard is a yellowish condiment that is made from the ground-up seeds of the mustard plant. These mustard seeds are usually mixed with water, salt, lemon juice, and spices to create a paste or sauce which has a distinct mustard taste that ranges from sweet, sour, and even spicy. The word mustard comes from the old French mustarde and the Latin mustum. Mustard making was brought to Britain by the Romans via Gaul. Ancient mustard was made by combining crushed mustard seeds with wine, vinegar, and water. Mustard preparation became very common in France during the 9th century. During the time, mustard was mostly produced in monasteries, and it wasn't until the 12th century when commercial production began. Mustard from this era had a different consistency than the mustard we have today. Eventually, advances in milling techniques gave rise to finer ground seeds. Mustard seed powder was then mixed with water to easily create mustard. In 1720, a method for extracting flour from mustard seeds was invented in Durham, UK. 
this method would go on and become the basis for modern mustard production techniques. Today, mustard is one of the most popular condiments used around the world. Most of the world's production is in the U.S. and Canada, while some countries like Russia, India, and China have their own homegrown industries that cater to domestic demand. You too can try your hand at homemade mustard. You will need 1 cup ground yellow mustard seeds 2 thirds cup white vinegar 1 half cup honey a pinch of salt. Start by combining all the ingredients in a small saucepan. Heat the pan at medium while whisking the ingredients together. Do this for 3 to 5 minutes or until the mixture is thick. After that's done, let it cool a bit in room temperature. Transfer it to a container and use it fresh. Or, if you're going to store it, place it in a jar and keep it in the fridge to store. Fun Fact! The annual mustard consumption at the New York Yankee Stadium is estimated to be more than 2 million individual packets of mustard. Coffee. The coffee is a brewed beverage that is prepared from roasted coffee beans. These beans come from the seeds of the berries of the coffee plant. The coffee plant is cultivated in more than 70 countries around the world, and the drink is considered as the second most popular drink in the world next to water. Most of what we know about its origin are based on an Ethiopian legend. According to the legend, a farmer named Kaldi saw that his herds of goats were eating the berries of the coffee shrub. He noticed that the goats seemed more active after eating the berries. He then tried the berries himself and noticed that it indeed made him more alert and active. He then shared his discovery to a local monastery whose monks then used the berries as an energy drink for long prayer sessions. After a few centuries, coffee made its way to Yemen through the importation and trade of Arab merchants. This was also the time when the plant was cultivated. The Arabic people called a drink made from the plant kawa. By the 1800s, coffee made its way into the newly established Americas. And enterprising businessmen would go on to found big coffee companies such as Maxwell House and Hills Brothers. This also helped spread its influence to reach other parts of the world. Today, coffee remains as a popular drink around the world. This is evidenced by the fact that many international and domestic brands for coffee can easily be bought anywhere around the world. Here are a few coffee-making methods that you can try at home. Instant Instant coffee is coffee that is pre-made and packed in powdered form. It is prepared by mixing with hot water. Hand drip method. A filter is placed over a funnel where ground coffee beans are held. Hot water is then poured over the coffee and drips to the coffee cup below. Using a coffee maker. The drip method is automated. You just need to place the ground coffee beans on top of the coffee maker and add in the correct amount of water for the pot. The water will be heated automatically and will drip down to the pot below. Fun fact! A type of coffee from Indonesia called coffee luwak or civet coffee comes from the pre-digested coffee berries that are excreted by the Asian palm civet. Salsa 
The salsa is a type of sauce or dip that is typically made of tomatoes, onions, peppers, and spices. The word salsa is taken from the Spanish term for sauce. So technically, all sauces are salsas, based on this definition. But outside of Spanish-speaking countries, the sauce that is mostly associated with salsa is the Mexican salsa, or salsa picante, which is a type of tomato and pepper-based dip. The salsa originated with the ancient Inca people and the other pre-colonial civilizations of what is now modern-day Mexico. The Incas, the Mayans, and the Aztecs made a type of sauce from a combination of tomatoes, peppers, and other spices. This sauce came to be known as salsa when the first Spanish conquistadors came to Mexico in the 1500s. By the early 1900s, Charles Arath of the New Orleans became the first person to commercially manufacture a type of red pepper sauce in 1916. A year later, the Salsa Bravo Company in Los Angeles was founded. The trend would be followed by a host of new sauce companies, each offering a distinct salsa flavor. From the late 1980s to the early 1990s, the salsa industry grew 79% in America alone. Want to try making salsa at home? Check out the simple recipe. You will need six large tomatoes. One onion chopped. Three fourths cup green chili pepper chopped. One teaspoon vinegar. One teaspoon salt. Start by first combining the tomatoes, onion, and the chili peppers. Drain the excess liquid, then add in the vinegar and salt. Stir well until all ingredients are combined. For a finer consistency, use a blender or food processor and pulse the ingredients until you get your desired level of consistency. Serve fresh or keep it in the fridge to store. Fun fact! The year 1991 was significant for salsa manufacturers in the U.S because it was the only recorded year where the salsa overtook the nationwide sales of ketchup based on dollar value. That's all the time we have for this episode. But join us again next time as we give you more tips, more trivia, and more stories behind the food we all love. Be sure to check in next time for another serving of Food Stories.